All right, let's talk about Justin Fields. Listen, definitely a guy who I've made plenty of film studies about, been in the media attention a lot so far, but I want to talk about just his passing for a bit, because I think what we've heard a lot about is, okay, running is electric, but can he still be good as just a pure passer? How good is his passing? Because the overall statistics are terrible. Like, I won't show them on the screen, but like, they're bad. The overall stats are bad. We all know that passing-wise, he's had some good games, but not necessarily necessarily been consistent but as we all know that's not all his fault there's only so much a quarterback can do uh when it comes to stats so uh let's start off with this play where it's going to be a design rollout to the offenses right you see fields is going to run to play action he rolls out towards the, where he's supposed to and there's just nothing going here i mean everything is covered down the field and there is pressure right in his face this is a disastrous situation quite frankly for Chicago and one that was all too prevalent in Justin Fields' second season and in his first season too to be honest. Fields is going to just throw the ball away. It's what he had to do. It's all he could do was get rid of the football and you know I thought he did the right thing uh, there on that play which hey it was a real issue in college that he wouldn't throw the, way, throw the ball away. He has improved a lot in that category which is definitely great to see but again you look at this play, and it's going to hurt your passer rating. But at the end of the day, no quarterback is going to succeed in that scenario. And if, if Fields tried to make something happen and a disaster happened, well, then everyone criticizes him. But at the same time, it's like, you know, when you get put in that situation often, you're not always going to make the smart decision as well. So it just it makes quarterbacks look bad when you're in these situations. Now, that being said, going over here, I don't want to absolve him of all the blame either. That wouldn't be fair. He had some issues as well, and that's what you're going to see on this play where it's going to be zone coverage and relatively simple concept with the two receivers who are closest towards the bottom of the screen one runs a little bit further deep one runs underneath throw it to whichever one is open basically because there's only one defender who's going to be designed to cover that area you throw it to the other guy it's a simple read so fields is going to take the snap he looks over in that direction and there's pretty clear uh, of a window right here. It's not going to get you a ton of yards. It's not going to go for a lot, but this is the way the play is designed to run. It's a second down right here. It's not a third down, so you don't have to get the first down right here. Get the five yards and move the ball down the field. Fields is not going to do that. He instead decides to scramble outside the pocket and goes down. And listen, there's definitely times when him deciding to run has been a good thing. I think we all agree that his running is by far and away uh, the good outweighs the bad, but there is some bad there as well. Sometimes I think you would like to see him just get rid of the football quickly. Again, young player has room to learn, I think. Going over to this play, so this is going to be against Green Bay right now, and I do think that this is where Fields really thrives, and uh, you know, I, uh, I think that one thing that, listen, we can sit here and say, how is his passing unrelated to the running but the reality is that's not totally a fair question because he's never going to have to be a bad running quarterback just throwing he's never going to have to be a pure pocket passer there's always going to be the threat of him running and I you know I think about Lamar Jackson and how Lamar uh won an MVP you know, largely by, in part, leading the league in passer rating that year because teams were respecting the run so much, they were playing coverages that the Ravens would know what is coming and could game plan against it, and that's pretty similar to what the Bears uh, have here. The Packers are going to be in zone coverage, which teams play a lot of zone coverage against fields because if you play man coverage and you have five guys who aren't looking at fields, we've seen fields have too many 70-yard rushing touchdowns uh, to just be okay with doing that, right? Even if you put a spy on him, he can make one guy miss and then be gone. So having zone coverage and having a lot of guys look at him uh, probably is the best way to uh, you know hinder his rushing ability. But when you do that, it means you can kind of scheme up guys to get open like the Bears are doing here. Watch how one this play begins. You're going to see that Fields, you know, uh, takes a snap. He waits for the play to develop. And at this point, there is a window for this throw to be made. And listen, it's not a tough window. Fields does make this throw and they are able to get a completion. And when Fields is at his best, it's this stuff that is happening. And on one hand, people are going to sit here and say, okay, but that's not that impressive. Fields' throw, you kind of expect NFL caliber quarterbacks to make that throw. It's I would agree with that. I think that's a fair point. I don't think this is the highest degree of difficulty passes. But what I would say is that that's kind of the greatness of Fields in a way is the fact that he can be in a situation where he can set up 
low degree of difficulty passes due to his legs. He doesn't have to be Peyton Manning. He doesn't. That's not what you should be expecting him to be. That's not what you need him to be. If he becomes that great, awesome. But that's not what you need him to be for him to be an incredibly effective quarterback. The reality is, if he can just be a somewhat effective passer, there's going to be games where he can have great statistical days. And we've already seen that, in fact. We've seen him have those days where the passing numbers look great. And it's like you go back and watch the tape, and even I've been guilty of this, where I'll say like, okay, yeah, but these were easy throws to make. It's true. I, I still don't think we've seen him be in a situation where guys aren't really getting open consistently, but he's still just making throws and moving the ball down the field with his arm anyway. And I don't know if we ever will see that, but we don't need to see that. That's not something that we typically, uh, you know, that's not something that he has to do to be a successful quarterback at the NFL level. It's just not. And one thing, too, is I really like his, you know, when he hits on a deep ball, it looks fantastic. And I, I do feel like while there were some deep ball accuracy issues, in my opinion, coming out of college, that was actually a real uh, thing that, uh, you know, if longtime fans of the channel know, uh, there's a lot of discussion about that, actually, where some people disagreed, some people agreed. But regardless, the deep ball has not been an issue here at the NFL level whatsoever. And here's an example. The concept itself is quarters coverage. So with two safeties deep and two corners making a conscious effort to keep things in front of them, you might think it's going to be a very difficult time uh, to throw the ball down the field, but actually it doesn't always work out that way, and sometimes it even goes the other way. Like, watch how on display, the safety does not pick up uh, the receiver running deep because he's looking over the middle because, hey, you have extra safety help deep and things like that. Uh, but the corner is thinking, I have a safety. I don't have to be as weary of covering down the field as well. And so because of that, sometimes you get guys to be open more often than you would expect in these situations. You have an open receiver. But again, for Fields, he's currently standing on his own 30-yard line, probably going to want to throw it to around his opponent's 20, so about 50 yards down the field uh, for him, and also he's going to have to have the right touch on it. But that's exactly what he does, and again, younger, earlier in his career, he kind of had a tendency to sort of just throw bullet throws every time he could in those situations, but now that is absolutely not what he does. He will use touch, although at the same time, uh, you know, uh, isn't knows how to fire a bullet through there as well. To me, one of the things that I think I am most impressed with with Justin Fields is just how I can see him continue to improve in little ways year after year. One of the things that makes projecting quarterbacks just so difficult is because you don't know who's going to get better, who's going to improve under weaknesses, and who's going to not improve under weaknesses. I think it's totally fair to say that like, coming out of college, Zach Wilson and Justin Fields each had roughly the same amount of weaknesses. I think the difference is that Fields has massively improved on his weaknesses, uh, and also his strengths have showed up in the NFL level, whereas, you know, Wilson's just has been a disaster. But like even, you know, some of the other players uh, that you see coming out of college who have weaknesses and just don't improve on them fields you're seeing the strengths you're seeing what he's good at and you're seeing him improve on his weaknesses so while he has some weaknesses and I think that's still fair to say that in his game I still want to see him consistently be able to throw the ball down the field does he have Lamar Jackson upside absolutely I think that's without uh, a doubt he has that upside we'll just have to see if he can hit that upside but I wouldn't bet against him that's what I think what do you guys think let me know in the comments below Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.